Hi, my name is Nick Osborne, aka The Coffee Detective, and today we're going to have a look at the Chemex Brewer. Uh, here it is, it's a, a pour over brewing system. Um, in fact, very similar to just a simple filter cone put on top of your coffee mug. But of course, the Chemex is uh, a lot more attractive. It's glass, it has a little two part wooden sleeve around it and a leather tie. In fact, if you loosen the tie, you can take off the collar and you can give it a good scrubbing, washing without getting the leather and wood wet. Now, this you may have seen a Chemex in a kind of top line coffee shop and they're very popular right now, um, but actually they've been around for over 60 years. Um, and I hope they're around for a lot longer because I love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that it is just glass. Uh, there's nothing automatic about it. <laughs> you don't have to plug anything in. There's no parts to go wrong. And something that I like is the fact that this is a kind of hands-on way of making coffee. You're actually using your hands, you're paying attention, um, and you're actually, you, know, you can take part in, in the brewing process. So, uh, a few things. So obviously, we, we, we've, got a, we've got a paper filter in the top here which is, it's wet because in fact what I did is I, I gave that a rinse and I warmed up um, the, the, the Chemex itself a bit just before we started this video. Um, so you put the coffee in there, you put the water in there, and then this in fact becomes your receptacle for the coffee and you pour it from there. Now, a couple of things to pay attention when you're using a Chemex as opposed to a filter cone. Uh, first of all, the, the filters are different. They're made by Chemex. They come in slightly different sizes, different shapes. But uh, basically this one you can see is just a, it's just a circle of paper. This paper, this filter paper, is much thicker um, than the kind of Melita filters you'd get for something like that. Uh, this slows down the water as it goes through the coffee. Um, and another thing to remember here is that when you put it in, which, you know, you can't, you, you can't put it in that way. You've got to, to make a cone, you've got to have one, one piece on one side, three pieces on the other. The three pieces go facing the spout here. This means that when I'm going to be pouring the, the, the water in here, that the paper doesn't bulge out and fill this little spout here so that there's kind of some air moving in, inside. So, so that's one thing to remember is use the Chemex papers um, and the three layers go in the front and the single layer goes in the back. The other thing about this is that you, you want to grind your coffee coarser than you would for a drip brewer or even for um, you know, a, a filter cone with a Melita filter. So, so this is working hand in hand with the thicker paper. The thicker paper takes out all the, all the residue, all the little bits of coffee, ground coffee. But if I made this fine grind instead of a coarse grind, uh, I'd have a couple of problems. One is that the, uh, the paper would get clogged up with the very, very fine particles. The other is that it would become over extracted. So, so think about it. Coffee is about the amount of coffee grinds, the amount of water and the temperature of water, and the extraction time, how long the water stays in contact with the coffee. If, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to not get too technical here, but if the water's gonna stay in here longer because it's a thicker paper, I need a coarser grind so that I don't get over extraction, all right? Right, so we're, we're, we're going to begin in a moment, but first a reminder of the basic recipe of making coffee, whether it's in this brewer or any other. And that is for every six ounce cup of water, you want 10 grams of ground coffee. So I'm going to make three cups in here. So I've got 30 grams, I've measured it out, I've got 30 grams of, of coffee. I, I just ground this just before, which again is something that you want to do. Uh, you grind the whole bean just before you brew, if you really, really want to get the best from your coffee. Now, the next thing is I've got to, if I'm doing three cups, I need 18 fluid ounces of water. So I've got my kettle here. It's a just under boiling. Um, I'm not going to pour it all in once. Actually, first of all, I'm just going to put about four fluid ounces in there. And I'm just going to 
wet the grinds. I'm not just pouring it all in and filling it to the top. I'm wetting the grinds. There's a reason for this. Actually, an easy way that I understand this is that if you have a house plant and the soil is dry and you just pour a huge amount of water, what tends to happen is the water just pours around the side of the dry earth um, and just drops out the bottom. Uh, same principle here. <coughs> what we're doing is we're, we're moistening the coffee grinds so that when I do put in more water, they, they've all begun to absorb a little bit of water and, and I won't have water just running away without really good contact. Another thing, oh, I was a little bit too late. You can perhaps just slightly see in the surface here is, is this, the, the coffee is kind of expanded. It's bloomed a little bit. Uh, now that only happens with fresh coffee. If your coffee, when you're making with a Chemex or indeed with uh, other kind of pour over methods, if you don't get a little rising of the grounds and some bubbles coming up, uh, that means your coffee is not, um, is not fresh. So now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just start adding bits of water that I've taken off. Four, so hang on, so I need another. Okay. So remember, I'm doing a total of 16. And I'm, and I, and I'm gonna pour this slowly. Now, you know, you see in some videos and in some coffee shops that they have these exotic kettles with little dimples on them and nicely shaped spouts. Uh, and from an aesthetic point of view, it's very nice. It, it, you know, it, it makes a nice visual show. Um, does it matter whether you pour the hot water <laughs> from one of those nice kettles or, or from just a simple, uh, you know, measuring jug like this? No, it doesn't. It makes no difference to the coffee whatsoever. So long as you have fresh coffee, so long as you have the right proportion of grinds to water, so that's 10 grams for every six fluid ounces, and so long as the, the time, the extraction time is about right. So, you know, from when I, not, not when I did the blooming, but after that, I should be looking to, you know, between four and five minutes um, of contact between the water and the coffee. This is like a, just a simple recipe for making coffee. Uh, again, you see, I'm not pouring it way up above the level of the coffee grinds. Uh, I don't want to rush the water through. I want the water to have full contact with the coffee on the way down. Nice looking brew down there. Uh, this is actually a Sumatra coffee that I'm brewing here, courtesy of Oren's Daily Roast in um, New York City. If you're in New York City, be sure to look up Oren's Daily Roast. Um, Oren has been roasting and drinking and selling coffee in New York for about 30 years now. and. Uh, you probably won't find any finer coffee in the city. Now, we're getting close. I mean, like I say, one of the things I like about this is, well, two things. One is the aesthetics of it. It's, it's a beautiful, simple, elegant system. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, uh, you know, buttons and microchips and things when it comes to making coffee. Um, the other thing is that I actually just like being part of the process of actually doing it. Um, it's not hidden, you know, behind some plastic wall and uh, bundles of wires. You're actually part of this. You're watching it. it it's, it's down to you to do it right. There's nothing automatic about it. Uh, so you have to think about your coffee. You have to appreciate your coffee. And particularly when you have a really fine bean, you know, a really good roast, a good bean, uh, then it, it, it sounds kind of romantic, but I, I kind of find it respectful to the coffee that you pay attention to how you make it and you don't just throw it into some kind of automatic coffee maker. So I'm just going to do one last little pour here and wait for that to go down. Uh, and like I say, when you loosen this, in fact, the, this wooden sleeve, which insulate, you know, is for insulation when you pick it up, uh, is actually divided at the back. So you take that off, the whole thing falls off, and so you can give this a really good wash. Just waiting for the last little bit to go down. This is a, this is a six cup um, Chemex. You can get them all the way up to 13 cup in size. And there are also a couple of 
designs. One is with the wooden collar and the leather tie like this. There's another one without that, uh, but instead there's a, as part of the glass, it's just a single piece, there, there is a handle um, on the back here. So it's just a single piece with a handle. I kind of like this one. Uh, again, it's, it makes no difference to the coffee, it's just the aesthetics of it. You know, I like the idea of a coffee maker being made of glass and wood and leather. Uh, it, 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 it appeals to me. So, it's all done, it's down, and for people who freak out about the mess, it's another nice thing actually about the Chemex paper. When you pick it up, it actually all holds together. It, it's, it, you know, you're not worried about the paper bursting or splitting or anything like that. I'm just gonna put it in there. When we're done, I'm gonna put it into my compost, uh, paper, and grinds. And yeah, as well as being the coffee brewer, this is also the pourer. So, that's a little hot for me to taste right now. Um, but I'm going to let it sit for a couple of minutes, then I'm going to taste it, and I'm quite sure I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, so that's the Chemex Brewer. I hope you found that useful. Goodbye.